I'm about to do an interview face to face. The person I'm about to speak to needs no introduction at all. And that's what I'll say to introduce this video. You'll hear my voice and you'll see another face in the very next scene. Phil Liggett. I said that you need no introduction. Everyone knows who you are, including people who have no idea about cycling. Yours is a voice that um, is basically synonymous with the sport you and I both love. You're back in Australia, you're calling a bike race again. You've got a mm. couple of great co-commentators in Adam Ears, Robbie McEwen, Matt Keen, and you're working with some great people. Is it good to be back? And uh, what else, could, we'll figure out what else we talk about now, but um, first of all, impressions of uh, Tour Down Under after a couple of years absence. But it is good to be back because, you know, COVID went on a bit and it was three years when we left to when we returned. And I must confess that um, there was a moment, I'm 79 years old, that I wouldn't be coming back. But, uh, it came back on the calendar. I survived COVID with a clean sheet and um, I was so happy to come back to Australia. Yeah. Yeah, because my first time here was in 1988 when I came over for the Commonwealth Bank Cycle Classic. That was my introduction to Australia in bicentennial year. And it was a while before I came out in New South Wales, quite a few years. And then uh, they found me and asked me to come and check out the Tour Down Under back in 1997. And until COVID came along, I'd done every year. Yeah, yeah, I can understand that. I, I have too. It's been, you know, right. we've travelled uh, many places for mm. cycling. You were probably twice as long as I. I've only been doing this 30 years. So um, <laughs> uh, I, I wonder how we can possibly start. But we did an interview a little bit before your film came out a couple of years ago. Yeah. And that was not long after Paul passed away and um, we touched on that but then I found it hard to ask questions because I teared up and uh, I couldn't go much further. Yeah. Um, do you want to just talk about life uh, without him in the commentary booth next to you? Are you able to do that in a quick summary? I'm sure you were practiced on it. Well Paul Schoen passed away very suddenly. We weren't, I, I spoke to Paul in the October of 2018. Uh, he rang me from Uganda where he lives and he said, uh, are you there yet? And he meant, am I also in Africa, because I've got a house in the bush near the Kruger Park in South Africa. And I said, yep, just arrived. It's great to be back. And then I was on the deck alongside me. And we had a long chat, and then he said, I'll call you soon. Because Paul and I didn't contact each other too much unless we were working together or travelling together. And the next message I got was uh, in the December, December the 2nd, 2018. Oh, can I just take it? Yeah, 100%. Just uh, gone and entered the zero kilometre, 133.2 lie ahead of the riders now. We were talking about Paul, 2nd of December. And, uh, yeah, and passed uh, away on the 2nd of December and I got a phone call from uh, his wife, Catherine, and I, got, I went very quiet when she said Paul's died this morning. And uh, I believe what she was saying to her, mm. nothing wrong with it. And he died of heart failure in the middle of the night, just didn't wake up. And uh, Trish, my wife, was on there doing the washing up actually in the sink, and she looked at us and, what's happening? I said, Paul's dead. And that started an incredibly strange period of my life because. Uh, I had to put it on Twitter, it's the only way I could reach the people. I'm in a very remote part of Africa. And uh, I remember David Miller, the cyclist, writing, I didn't believe it until I read what, Paul, what Phil said that Paul would pass because then I knew it was true and nobody could believe it. Um, it was not expected. Paul was well loved on the circuit, as you know. He was a great asset here. I worked alongside him for 32 years. I brought him into the business uh, after he stopped cycling on the Tour de France. And we were joined at the hip, it's fair to say. We did everything together, and we did everything without thinking together. Uh, we would walk out the hotel bedrooms on opposite sides of the corridor at exactly the same time with no pre-arrangement. We'd eat everywhere together, but we never realised we did it. Um, we just did everything together. Uh, once the race was over, of course, we went our own way. He went back to Africa, I went to the UK and then to Africa, different parts of the world. 
We tended to talk birds, saving rhinos and other animals and helping the African people. And that's what we're doing to this day with Paul, with his Paul Sherwin project. I'm just about to open a, a vocational school for young women in Karamoja, which is where Paul really helped those people. And they went to Shun on the bikes. It was a very special situation. So that was the, the passing of Paul, and then I had to face up to a new, career, a new uh, season without him after 33 years. Mm. And took on the, everybody who was assigned to work with me too, because it's inevitable that we're going to say, first of all, Phil is not the same man. Uh, Phil has lost his wingman, etc., etc. And the poor man who will be working alongside me is going to inevitably be, be compared. But I think we've done pretty well. Um, Bob mm. Roll is my, my new wingman, as it is, in, uh, in America. And I tend to pick up uh, Anna Mears or Robin McEwen um, when we're here in Australia. So, all good people, all knew Paul, all loved him. So, it's not been that difficult to do that. <clears throat> but, boy, yeah, I, I lost my shadow and uh, great confidence. You've been able to say all of that without a tear falling, I'm quite surprised, but you've kind of adjusted to it now, haven't you, I suppose? I've probably said too many. Um, when I do mention it, when I do quite often write, I'm chairman of the board of the Porsche Project, mm. and I often meet people. I meet people all over the world who come up and hug me, and, uh, and the first question usually is, how are you? How am I? Mm. And uh, Because they knew how close we were. Mm. Paul's no. heart was in the right place, that's the thing. Paul was a genuinely good guy, loved his cycling. His attitude and, and his humour was the same as mine to life in general. Mm. Cycling's a game. We enjoy it, we try to present it to the non-cycling people in this world. That's very important, so it's welcomed. Yeah. You've introduced a lot of people to cycling, myself included, mm. and we could go off a myriad ta uh, tangents. It would be very easy to talk for hour and hour and hour and just keep going and not even touch the sides of all that we needed to talk about. That's why I wanted to sure. talk about Paul first. Mm. Mm. Um, but and, and I'm not going to try and hit you with what's your favourite stage or who's your favourite bike rider, <laughs> but I, I just wonder if you could just... We, we're not going to do a long interview, but I am interested to know... Um, you know, what it is that still draws you into cycling. When you think that you're going to a bike race, what makes you most happy or what, what pleases you about the, the most about the prospect of going back to a bike race again? Because you've seen so many over the years, all over the place. Yeah. You could easily be bored by it, but... You could easily, easily be bored. I have to say that uh, occasionally I am bored by the racing. You know, it can be very boring. Especially now we give television coach from start to finish, that is, for my own mind, not the way to sell the sport because mm. all the tactics and the way they race them, for a non cycling viewer, it is boring until we get the race decided. But um, why do I go every day? Because I love meeting the people. And by the people, it's the entourage, not just the bike riders. Mm. Um, I love it when a young cyclist succeeds comes from nowhere, I've had a big spate of those these last few years, mm -hmm. Tour de France particularly. Um, but it's the friendship, it's a family. Um, our, all our intentions are the same, to make the, the sport popular to the non-cycling person and draw them in. And I made, well, I guess I've made pretty much all of my friends through the sport of cycling. And I'm happy to carry on with that as long as I can. While the phone keeps ringing, I'll keep working. I broke, I fractured three ribs just uh, two weeks ago and then you fractured four ribs a week ago. Um, so you're a little bit more subdued than you might otherwise be, but it, you know, uh, you have plenty of energy and I, you're still on the bike while you're in Adelaide, aren't you? You still do your I've cycling. I've managed about 100k so far. It's been pretty hard at times with the ribs so I, and one day I just had to turn around and go home. Mm. But these last 48 hours, I've got to admit, I think I'm on the, on the good road again. So I'm feeling cool. Um, the Tour Down Under is almost finished. Then there'll be a switch up to uh, Victoria to the Cadell Evans race. And then, uh, then I'll go to Africa soon after mm -hmm. to actually switch to my animal preservation, conservation, and tell the people of the area where I live over there. It's a varied lifestyle. As you get older, you appreciate life, I think, even more. 
um, because there can't be that many more years. And I want to see others enjoy life like I've enjoyed life. And if I can help them, I do. I remember this, this last year we've helped a young lady in Africa to learn to fly. And we, we sort of paid her way. And she's 19 and she can fly now. She hasn't got a driving license, but she can fly an aeroplane. She is so happy. And that's a, that's, that to me is a real success story and makes me feel good. When I watched your film, I think one of the, the loveliest scenes of, of all, and, and there was a lot of glorious imagery from your, particularly from your place in Africa, which people aren't familiar with. But there's a scene with Pat dancing on the deck yeah. and um, or Patricia, uh, people know her as Trish or Pat, I know her as Pat. And um, she's the love of your life. And I think she actually mm -hmm. lifts the spirit of a room everywhere she goes. Um, can we just conclude with a little um, overview of, of, of how it is that you two have become this lifelong partnership and she's endured you going here, there and everywhere. And it's clear that you're still totally and utterly besotted by one another. Well, it appears that way, of course. <laughs> we still live after 52 years of marriage, independent lifestyle. But our targets are the same, which is conservation. She works very hard to, um, to raise money for the rhinos and for here in South Australia for, for um, the koala life. And we get on very well together because we join in partnership to do that. We still, when we go out and have dinner together, we never stop talking. We're like newly wet at the table. There's always so much to discuss. Uh, we chose many years ago not to have children because we were selfish. That's basically the reason. I enjoyed my life being a cyclist and then being a cycling reporter. Trish was an Olympic ice skater, speed skater, and she didn't want to change either. So we continued our life pre-marriage that we took us straight into a long marriage. We were married back in 1971. And um, yeah, no, it's life is never easy in married life, but uh, we managed to find the secret. And we've done a lot of things together. She doesn't usually come on the big race with me because she hates hanging on to people's coattails, as she is here because she can do her own thing. She walks every day to the dance studios where she dances. When we shot that dance on the deck, uh, I think she excited even the elephants up on the deck there. We had fun. And um, all, my, all my awards and trophies have been pushed to one side of the sideboard now to put all the dance trophies on. Now, I'm not going to complain. We go on very well as a partnership, for sure. I'm so thrilled that I met you all those years ago. I've, I've enjoyed your calls of cycling. I've enjoyed learning about our, a sport that, uh, that is beautiful. Mm -hmm. I thank you for everything you've done for the sport. And um, I, um, I just want to say thanks very much for taking a quick moment to have a chat with me uh, and, um, and, my, and the audience. I've been going to, I don't know, quite a few years now. Mm. You found what I found, and like, like me, you're enjoying it, so there's no reason ever to give it.